Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Vulgarians, Barbarians, and Latitudinarians, welcome along to the Joe Spivey YouTube channel, where we discuss books and little else. And welcome to a new series, folks, one that I have very amusingly titled Venting with Verse. See what I did there? I used two words with which each start with the same letter and put them in conjunction together for comedic effect. How good am I? Um, yes, Venting with Verse, where we essentially just... Um, uh, a close read a poem and um, yeah, re really decide what's going on in there and whether we enjoy it, whether we think it's, uh, you know, whether we think it's got any modern applications, whether we think it's uh, artistically inclined, whether we think it's meant to be uh, intuitive or whether we think it's meant to be um, a sort of initiative for something or, or whatever. We're going to look at some classic poetry and uh, yeah, see what we make of it. Hopefully things that not many of you have read. Um, I do read some bizarre poetry on certain occasions. Um, so yes, First up, we are reading, uh, I'm going to use the, the selected works of uh, John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. And the particular one that we're looking at today is the 1674 uh, uh, screed, essentially, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a slightly more extended satirical piece um, called A Satire on Reason and Mankind, sometimes shortened to A Satire on Mankind. Uh, I think that's just sort of uh, needlessly sensational and clickbaity, um, because it is really a satire against reason rather than mankind. Um, so yes, this is uh, a really, really nice poem, and hopefully, thanks to the, the uh, brilliance of modern technology, you shall have at some point, whilst I'm reading some of the verse, uh, a little, uh, 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 just a little sort of an introduction here, a, a nice little picture that will that will rear up above the parapet and um, show itself and then recede, and then the next section will show itself and then recede, and all will be well and edited perfectly. Um, if not, then um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm probably having sacked another individual from this enterprise. But there we are. Um, so yes, this is essentially an argument against rationalism, folks. We'll get into it first, but I'm going to provide you with a little bit of context first. Um, yeah, so see, he was, a, so was a, a libertine poet, and it's a yeah an argument against rationalism. Um, you know those sort of pedants that try to um, evince the presence of something when it obviously isn't there, and they use... Um, um, ridiculous language. Um, the, the phrase used uh, in the Yorkshire vernacular is um, essentially babbling, uh, sorry, uh, uh, baffling people with a word that I can't repeat on here, essentially. You know what I mean. Um, baffling people with uh, fol de roll. Um, I, I, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, can I give an example? Uh, that the ghosts exist, for example. Um, uh, these these people that, that that try to persuade you of something, they 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 might say, well, we we've got you know perfect evidence of of the existence of of God, heaven forbid, a higher prime being or or a ghost. Um, so we're talking Roch uh, Rochester, yes, the Earl of Rochester is talking about um, reason being uh, somehow slightly nefarious or counterproductive or something that only uh, you know bipedal hominids can do rather than just rather than baboons and squirrels and, and, and things like that. Um, so yes, let's let's get into it. The most notable example I've got of, of um, sort of what we might call militant rationalism uh, in the modern day is on the YouTube channel of Alex O'Connor, folks, who otherwise a uh, laudable creator who will always talk about, um, small c for creator, by the way, uh, will always talk about uh, uh, us apparently not having any free will, even though obviously even a three-year-old can recognise that you can choose to go left and right um, whenever you want to, and you you are um, not at the behest of seventy four different factors, and you can you can um, separate from everything else choose something. We do have our own independence and our own um, you know yeah as I say our own our own independence. Um, but but he will always then as soon as somebody points out the the stark bleeding obvious to him, um, he will then say, well what about if you were in a lagoon of gunge um, wearing your grandmother's oven mitts? And Mick Jagger was poking you with a pogo stick. What about free will then? And it will create this ridiculous scenario um, from which you cannot extricate yourself. Um, and that's that's the, the, the type of pedantry, the, the type of um, uh, yeah ridiculous folder all. And usually the, the, the bilge spewed out from the intelligentsia about reasoning and rationality. That's what he's railing against here. So that's a little bit of background. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So there are, I think, five sections that I've highlighted. And you will you will we, we will see that it's... Um, highly wrought and it's it's really considered and probably took days and weeks to write rather than just sort of you know the modern equivalent of a shopping list it's it's really very good so um yes let's get into it hopefully i'm going to move slightly over here so that the uh, uh perspective uh, uh image can 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 rear up and you can read along with me how excellent would that be so here we are 
Um, this is a satire against mankind. Were I, who to my cost already am, one of those strange, prodigious creatures, man, a spirit free to choose for my own share what case of flesh and blood I please to wear, I'd be a dog, a monkey, or a bear, or anything but that vain animal who is so proud of being rational. The senses are too gross, and he'll contrive a sixth to contradict the other five, and before instinct will prefer reason, which fifty times for one does err. Reason, an ignis fatuous in the mind, which leaves the light of nature, sense, behind. Pathless and dangerous, wandering ways it takes, through errors, fenny bogs, and thorny breaks. Now, you'll notice there that that rhymes, which means that you put two words together that sound the same, um, which makes everything a little bit more mellifluous, a little bit more rhythmic, and more pleasant to, to, to um, the inner ear, as it were. Um, but yeah, in some interesting points that I want to, uh, hopefully that the image is still there, um, so, some interesting points that I want to pick up upon and, and, and unpack, shall we say, um, is he, notes, he says at the start, where I, to whom I cost already am, one of those strange creatures, man, um, a spirit free to choose for my own share, um, whether to be an animal, I'd be, I'd be a dog, a monkey, or a bear. In other words, he's saying, if I was a human, he's saying that human beings can indeed choose their own skin. It, would it not make more sense if you were to say, were I not, who to my cost already am, one of those strange prodigious creatures, man, a spirit free to choose for my own share. So he's, he's saying, he's, he's looking about, he's talking about the mutability of, um, of, of human nature and of perhaps, heaven forbid, moving from, or at least, Drawing a level between um, squirrels and bears and boars, spelt with an A, um, drawing an equivalence between uh, those and, and ourselves, um, which is obviously something that we like to think of as slightly different, um, <clears throat> when in fact we are just, um, some might say, over-evolved hominids. We are, we are just, you know, previous bonobos and monkeys um, that invented language so as to communicate more specifically and with, with greater complexity with one another. Um, that is the only thing that separates us from, um, from, from, from those um, babbling animals. But yes, um, so this is, he notices there, he talks about the ignis fatuus, which is a um, otherwise known as a sort of will-o'-the-wisp, um, used in, in mythology rather a lot, some, some kind of some orb in the distance that you that will that originally or, or or at least instantaneously looks to be a source of illumination and you follow it and before long you realize that it was a sort of ill-fated uh, uh, fool's errand that you were being led upon. Um, so yes, that's a really, really nice bit. So yeah, uh, a reason igneous fatuous in the mind, which leaves the light of nature sense behind, pathless and dangerous, wandering ways it takes through errors, fenny bogs and thorny breaks. So he's saying essentially that most of the time reasoning is both, as I say, ill-fated and counterproductive, and the sense, which is a kind of um, innate, unbidden recognition of objective fact, ought to uh, take priority over, you know, whatever casuistry that an academic can come up with. Um, then the next really interesting bit is when he introduces a dialogue into the, into the poem, so he, he rails against reason a little bit more, talks about bladders of philosophy, um, but then on line, I'm going to start line 46, um, he introduces, as I say, a sort of an individual that comes uh, uh, from the uh, theatrical sidelines, and I'm going to do it in a Cockney accent so as to make sure that um, things seem different. Um, but now me thinks some, again, hopefully it's there, but now me thinks some formal band and beard takes me to task. Come on, sir, I'm prepared. Then, by your favour, anything that's writ against this jibing, jingling neck called wit likes me abundantly, but you'll take care upon this point not to be too severe. Perhaps my muse were fitter for this part for I profess I can be very smart, on wit, which I abhor with all my heart. I long to lash it in some sharper say, but your grand indiscretion bids me stay, and turns my tide of ink another way. What rage ferments in your degenerate mind, to make you rail at reason and mankind? Blessed glorious man, to whom alone kind heaven, an everlasting soul hath freely given, whom his greater maker took such care to make, that from himself he did the image take. And this fair frame, in shining reason dressed, to dignify his nature above beast. Reason, by whose aspiring influence we take a flight beyond material sense. Dive into mysteries, then soaring pierce the flaming limits of the universe. Um, yeah, so that's, that's again, he's, he's you know, uh, uh, giving credence to the other side. And he then later goes on to say that um, he isn't against... Um, reason per se. He isn't against all uh, manifestations of reason or examples of it or roots of it, um, but, 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 but the kind of, yeah, the kind of casuistry. And it's, it's, it's usually the work of a grifter or of somebody acting in bad faith or employing sharp practice, shall we say. Um, you know, somebody who just, just 
continually blabs and blabs and blabs on to absolutely no end. I realise that there's an ironic tinge to this because I do indeed blab and blab and blab on to no end on occasion. But yeah, just the people that, that are obviously talking nonsense but are using that are that are that are bringing in all sorts of curlicues and cornices of the um, the epistemic class or whatever in order to justify their 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 wrongfulness essentially. Um, so then then um, then uh, later on, this is this is in his reply to that man. Hold, mighty man, I cry. All this we know from the pathetic pen of Ingelo, from Patrick's pilgrim, Stillingfleet's replies, and tis this very reason I despise. This supernatural gift that makes a mite think he's the image of the infinite, or infinite, uh, comparing his short life, void of all rest, to the eternal and the ever-blessed. This busy, puzzling stirrer up of doubt that frames deep mysteries and then finds them out. Filling with frantic crowds of thinking fools, those reverend bedlams, colleges and schools. And boy, do I know about the, uh, the, the those frantic crowds, those, those reverend bedlams. Yes, so uh, this, I, I, I highlighted this section uh, purely just to point out that when you're reading things that were written, when was this have been? The best part of 350 years ago. Um, do not puzzle yourself or, or, or do not worry about... Um, not knowing every single morsel of the text. Do not worry about the pathetic pen of Ingelo. Do not worry about Patrick's pilgrim or Stilling Fleet's replies. Um, do not bother yourself um, with, with with knowing all of that um, because you you know you can research it afterwards as a, as, a, as a nice little bit of um, you know a little bit of a concomitant or a corollary to understanding the text. But but don't bother yourself and become obsessed with knowing every single syllable of it. Open yourself up to to miscomprehension and difficulty indeed. Um, so yes, uh, we've got uh, just one or two more sections to um, uh, pick out here. Uh, what else have we got? Yes, we've got uh, line 173 or whatever. Um, so this is again just another, it, it's talking about sort of uh, when it's this gorgeous, uh, so I, I don't really know what on earth it is that he's looking at here, but it's that gorgeous and that brilliant and that euphonic that you just want to read on and on and on. You, you would happily read this gentleman's shopping list if they were written so well. All this with indignation have I hurled at the pretending part of the proud world, who, swollen with selfish vanity, devise false freedoms, holy cheats, and formal lies over their fellow slaves to tyrannise. But if in court so just a man there be, in court a just man yet unknown to me, who does his needful flattery direct, not to oppress and ruin, but to protect, since flattery, which way soever laid, is still a tax on that unhappy trade, if so upright a statesman you could find, whose passions bend to his unbiased mind. Um, so that's, that's you know, you could just read him canter on all day. You've got all sorts of, of gorgeous rhymes there. It, it of course, uh, scans really rather well. It's ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. Um, the pentam, the, the, the iambics there are, are really very noticeable. And it's just... It's just really, really nice to read, isn't it? It sounds nice, folks. And then uh, the final section, um, this is a, a tirade against sort of um, um, overcomplication. Uh, over um, and yeah, I think it, it sort of descends into a, a flawed uh, defence of his own libertinism, or at least his, um, you know, carnal practices or whatever. I think that the, the reason that he's trying to compare men to apes and to, you know, as to nothing better than butterflies and pigeons and squirrels and silkworms um, is so that he can essentially just go and um, debauch all of his life. But anyway, there we go. Um, this is talking about a, a, an honest reasoner, uh, somebody sort of at the pulpit maybe of a church. With all his noise, his tawdry clothes and loves, but a meek, humble man of modest sense, who, preaching peace, does practice continence, whose pious life's a proof he does believe, mysterious truths which no man can conceive. If upon earth there dwell such godlike men, I'll here recant my paradox to them. Adore those shrines of virtue, homage pay, and with the rabble world their laws obey. If such there are, yet grant me this at least, man differs more from man than man from beast. Again, talking about there, there being more um, there being more difference, or at least there, there being uh, greater differentiators between our own species than, than perhaps uh, is uh, manifest between ourselves and bonobos or whatever. So yes, that is the satire against reason and mankind. I only went through four or five sections there, probably covered about half of it, and will almost certainly have, have um, committed very many oversights and have 
flown over a great deal of things, um, which will, of course, in the comments, rear up like poetic garden rakes that come and smack me on the forehead. But I'm going to try and cap this video at 15 minutes. Um, we're going to be looking at um, some Byron, some Pope, some Dunn. I'm hopefully at the weekend going to do a video which is essentially seven poets or seven or eight poets that you ought to read and maybe ones that you haven't before. But yes, this is a big, this is a, 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 um, a collection of his most significant works, uh, some of which are, are really, really, really rather nice. Um, some really insightful things there. There's a bit of debate about whether this is um, Rochester's actual persona or whether indeed it is an invented persona that is contrived in order to, to, to satirise the position. I think it's the former. I think this is um, a sort of uh, a, an earnest and personal avowal, but, but you know, feel free to, to have a read um, up of the, the whole thing and come to your own conclusion. So yes, please let me know in the comments what you felt, what you thought about it. I think it's bloody damn marvellous, which is why it's been my uh, first example, or at least my first little student for venting with verse. So yes, I do indeed hope you enjoyed this video, folks. Uh, let me know what you thought of the poem down in the comments below. Um, and I'm going to uh, bid you all a jolly farewell and say uh, thank you ever so much for watching BookTube and say goodbye. <laughs>